for the next 30 days, I'll be eating nothing but Taco Bell to see if it's possible to actually become healthier while doing it. I'll be bringing you along for every step of the way, so we'll get to find out together if it's possible. Today is day one of my experiment, and it's time for my first meal. Let's do this. Oh, okay, apparently the indoor dining is closed, so drive through it is. Thank you. All right, here are the rules I'm gonna abide by. Rule number one, all food and drink I consume must be from Taco Bell. That means no snacks unless they're purchased from Taco Bell. Actually, I'm gonna take this off so my wife can eat. Rule number two, I must have at least three meals a day. So I'm not ruling out more, you know, I could have a second breakfast or a late night snack, but it cannot be less than three for a total of 90 meals. And the point of that rule is so I'm not like starving myself just to skew the results. Rule number three, I have to eat every item on the menu at least once. And I'm doing that just so people can't say, he didn't really eat what normal people eat at Taco Bell. Case in point, I'm currently having a cheesy gordita crunch. All right, it is already the end of day one and I'm feeling good. I was a little bit tired after breakfast this morning. For those wondering, I did poop today and it was pretty normal. But don't worry, I am going to be keeping a running tally of what I will call less than pleasant bowel movements. But for now, I got to go to bed tomorrow morning. I'm going to fill you in on how I'm going to actually measure my health. I'm just excited to finally be starting the experiment. Really? I'm, uh, I'm making a documentary. So to give you a recap of the past week or so, I really tried to soak in my final week of eating non-Taco Bell food, so I just balled out. And while all of that was happening, I got to do an interview for the local news, and that story ended up getting picked up by local news stations all across the country. But the icing on the cake was when Jimmy Fallon told a joke about my experiment in his monologue on The Tonight Show. A man in Virginia said that he's going to eat only Taco Bell for 30 days to see if their food can make you healthier. Taco Bell is so excited, they're like, he called us food. <laughs> So with all the publicity, there's been no shortage of people sharing their opinions. And a lot of people have expressed concern for my health. So with that in mind, I just wanted to let you know that I made sure to consult with multiple medical professionals. I visited my primary care physician, tested my body composition at UVA's exercise physiology lab, and had blood drawn for a metabolic panel and a lipid panel. Shout out to Will Nash for sponsoring the body composition analysis and the Lasters and Shanks for sponsoring my initial blood work. I'm doing all those tests before and after because I want this experiment to be more nuanced than just whether I gained or lost weight, but more on that later. So here's where I'm starting from. Starting at guard from the University of Virginia, Virginia, it's Sam Reed! Standing at 6'4 and weighing in at 196 pounds, he's got 19% body fat, and his blood pressure is 122 over 72. His sodium, glucose, and triglycerides are all within normal ranges, but his cholesterol is considered borderline high, so it'll be crucial to keep an eye on that over the course of the month. My primary care physician made it very clear that you cannot be healthy while eating in the drive-thru. And I just want to say that I understand that this experiment is not recommended from a medical standpoint. When I surveyed my audience, a very small percentage said they thought that I could actually become healthier while doing this. And you might be thinking to yourself, healthy is such a subjective term. How are you going to gauge whether your health has improved or not? So for starters, I wanted to interview some people on the street, and here's what they had to say. All right, so what would you say it means to be healthy? Daily exercise, watching your nutrition, doctor's visits periodically to get your blood work done and stuff like that. Eating well, a good amount, and then the right kinds of food. I'm trying to eat a salad like every like two days, three days. Okay, I would say that you can do your life the way you want to do it and feel good. As long as like your body is able to like function well and you just like overall feel Good. Returning to like the natural form of eating and movement. There's physical health and mental health, so I think as long as those two things are in balance. To be able to easily run a mile. Kind of mental, spiritual, physical, you know? If someone's trying to be healthy, how often would you recommend that they eat fast food? I would say, if possible, only once a week? Uh, um, maybe once every three days, maybe? Maybe like once a month. Maybe once in a blue moon. Probably not that often. Uh, maybe once a month or something. It depends on what kind of fast food you're talking, because Chipotle shouldn't count. Right. But yeah, maybe infrequently. They should just listen to like their own bodies and like what will be serving to them. I feel like it depends on like who you are, where you're eating, and like what your lifestyle is. Like once every never. Yeah, I would say never. Never. Well, well, well I mean, every once in a while, but it's not that good for you. I decided I needed to bring in an expert, so I called up Katie Spada, who's a registered dietitian who works primarily with former athletes. So if someone were to ask you, as a registered dietitian, what you would say it means to be healthy, 
what would you tell them? I would say that being healthy is when you feel your best emotionally, physically, mentally, and it's a place that you can see yourself living for the rest of your life. And so it's looking at how your health promoting behaviors impact you emotionally, how they impact you mentally, the, the mental strain and stress that they put on you, and then of course the physical aspect. So it's not just how you look. Food shouldn't be stressful. Anytime a food decision or a food experience causes stress, that's a red flag to me as this is probably an unhealthy relationship with food. Yeah, and I noticed you didn't say anything about weight or really any numbers at all. No, no. I, I think that the weight is not the only piece that can impact your health. In fact, I think it's probably the smallest piece of impacting your health. There are numbers, sure, like I like to look at vital signs, I like to look at lab values, and that would be under that physical umbrella, but I don't look at BMI, I don't look at weight as impacts on a person's health. What would you say uh, if you hear someone refer to earning your meal or working off your dessert or that type of you know, give and take relationship with, with our food. Yeah, we have that burn to earn mentality. If I want the pizza, I need to go to the gym and burn it off. It's such a toxic kind of thought process because it insinuates that we need to do something to justify eating. And so when we say that we need to use exercise to justify the calories or justify eating a certain food, we're negating the fact that our body needs energy regardless. And that brings me to my fourth and final rule, which is that I'm gonna limit the amount of exercise I can do each week to five hours max. And I'm making that rule because I don't want this to turn into something where I'm just exercising an unhealthy amount so I can skew the results. And if you're wondering, yes, this is a different Taco Bell. I pulled up to my Taco Bell at 7.35 p.m and all the lights were off and they said they were closing early. So I had to drive half an hour to the next closest Taco Bell. All right, end of day two, I'm having some mild indigestion. And I think it might be because I've been eating pretty quickly. So I'm gonna try to slow my meals down a little bit, see if that helps. My poop today was a little bit less solid than I would have liked. So that's our first less than pleasant bowel movement of the experiment. I suspect it's because I had a fair amount of fire sauce with my cheesy gordita crunch last night, so I'll try to dial that in and get it figured out for the future. Just for fun, I'm gonna be doing some fitness testing at the beginning and end of this experiment. So last night, I saw how many consecutive pull-ups I could do, and right now I'm about to run a mile for time. So just for some background, I would describe myself as fairly active. I ran track in high school, and since then I've kept up with running and I've run a few marathons. Any thoughts on how I should think about exercise as I'm doing this? Well, again, it's gonna kind of come back to moving so that it feels good for you. We don't have to burn to earn our food, even when you're eating something like Taco Bell. Um, but what forms of movement are gonna feel best for you. So we know that doing a combination of strength training and cardio is what supports metabolism the best. Building lean tissue, so building lean body mass, building muscle, is what supports our metabolic health the most. So while some people might think, oh, I need to do a lot of cardio to burn off the calories, it's actually building more lean tissue that's gonna support your metabolic health regardless of what foods it is that you're consuming. So maybe focusing a little bit more on the weight training actually during this to build lean tissue to support your metabolic health. I feel like cardio has always been tied in popular culture to burning fat. But what I'm hearing yeah. you saying is that kind of building your lean tissue, your muscle, helps you have a, a higher resting metabolic rate. Is that accurate? Correct. Lean tissue muscle is more metabolic at rest. And so it helps you to continue using more energy even when you're just sitting down. Then cardio, you're burning more maybe in the moment, but you don't have that delayed burn like you do when you build lean tissue from weight training. So my plan right now is to go to the gym three times a week and then go on two runs each week. And it's okay if I don't hit all of those, but that's kind of the limit that I'm setting for myself. I'm also not super interested in losing weight. I'd rather gain muscle. And so I'd be okay if I ended up weighing more, but having a lower percent body fat. I'd consider that a win in my book. And yeah, if you're wondering, they reopened the indoor dining area. All right, it is the end of day three. When I woke up this morning, I did not feel great. 
I do not feel great. But I got that run in and I've actually felt better today than I did on either of the first two days. So I'm feeling optimistic plus very normal bowel movements today. As week one continued, I navigated my way through the menu item by item. I will say I haven't like necessarily been looking forward to breakfast just because I feel like everything is like eggs and tortillas. But the past couple days I've been like pleasantly surprised. But maybe it's like Stockholm syndrome where I'm being held captive by this food and I've developed affection for it. If that isn't delicious, holy cow. Got the orange juice this morning. I'm glad they ended up having orange juice because there was a small part of me that was like a little bit worried that I would get scurvy from a lack of vitamin C. I've had some variation of this Power Bowl every single day for lunch. And I know this sounds crazy, but in this moment, I can't see myself getting tired of this. I gotta be honest, I'm definitely starting to get a little bit tired of this. I'm getting water most of the time, so I just started bringing my own to save on the cups and the straws that they're giving me. It also wasn't long before I was on a first name basis with everyone who worked in the drive-thru. Hey Conan, it's Sam. Alright, pulling around. Thanks man. I already know what it is. Is that Antoine? Yep. Before I knew it, the week was almost over and it was time for my first weekly check-in. I'm actually really curious to see what my blood pressure will be like because I feel good, but it'd be kind of a red flag if you know my blood pressure was significantly higher than it was before the experiment. At my check-in, I found out that my blood pressure had gone up slightly to 123 over 83, but my EMT friend Claire reassured me that I definitely wasn't in any danger, at least for now. I celebrated by heading to a cookout with some friends, which for me meant BYOTB or bring your own Taco Bell. And on day eight, I reached a very important milestone. All right, here it is, the final item that I need to eat in order to complete the entire Taco Bell menu, a side of beans. They are very soupy. Why did I save this one for last? Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Yeah! Now that I was finished with the menu, it was time to introduce side quests, smaller objectives to complete throughout the journey. Side quest number one involves securing an interview with Taco Bell's resident dietitian, Missy Shapok. Missy essentially has the coolest job in the world. She has a huge say in the development of new and existing menu items and has been one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason, that Taco Bell is now considered one of the healthiest fast food restaurants. I knew Taco Bell probably wouldn't be super psyched about me putting my body at risk by eating their food, so I started with some vague inquiries through Taco Bell's website and other publicized means of contact. While I waited for a response, I started to plan out what I wanted to eat for the remainder of the month. For those that are curious, I'm not counting calories or keeping track of macros. I'm just trying to practice intuitive eating by paying attention to hunger and fullness cues. But I'll share my complete meal log at the end if you're interested. I feel like I really hit my stride in week two. I was just feeling great. And even though I didn't end up hearing back from Missy or anyone at Taco Bell, I wasn't ready to give up yet. At my week two check-in, I discovered that my blood pressure had gone up yet again and it wasn't showing any signs of stopping. From what I understand, these numbers are technically considered stage one hypertension, but somehow I wasn't too phased by that. From what I've read, one of the causes of high blood pressure could be a diet that's high in sodium, so that absolutely checks out. I used the end of week two as a milestone to clean the Taco Bell bags out of the back of my car because it was really starting to smell bad. On day 15, I did my halfway point weigh-in and I was even less concerned about that result. I'd put on a little bit of weight, about four pounds, which might seem like a lot, but it's important to remember that it's totally normal for your body weight to fluctuate up to five pounds within a single day. The reason I'm only weighing in once during the experiment is because I don't think weight should be the end all be all for health. But I think it's something that people, myself included, can obsess over. All in all, I feel pretty good. Obviously, the increasing blood pressure is not great, and it makes me a little bit nervous for what the results of my blood work will be at the end of the month. But I'm not concerned about my weight at all. What I didn't know was that things were about to take a turn for the worse. After feeling relatively good during weeks one and two, week three was about to be a whole different ball game. First off, I introduced a new side quest of eating nothing but vegan and vegetarian options, which I was actually pretty excited about. From what I've heard, Taco Bell is one of the best fast food restaurants when it comes to vegan and vegetarian options. A couple changes I noticed pretty quickly at the beginning of week three. One, I started feeling really tired. Like at the gym today, just did not have any energy. And two, I started to experience some pretty serious gas. I wasn't expecting that at all, but according to the internet, it's really common for people who are just starting a vegetarian or vegan lifestyle. It was literally so bad one day that I think I inadvertently made the gym attendant leave and go into the other room for the rest of my gym session. Unfortunately, things would get worse before they would get better. During my track workout on day 17, I was able to hit similar times as the week before, but I felt like my body was working so much harder to keep up. After the workout, my watch said that my heart rate was 200 beats per minute, which is way higher than my exercise heart rate should be. So it's definitely slightly alarming, and yeah, hopefully I can make some tweaks in what I'm eating and my energy will come back up to normal. I guess up until this point, I hadn't actually been worried about my 
health, but the heart rate thing really rattled me. For the first time in this experiment, I was legitimately concerned for my safety. I wanted to get to the bottom of what could be causing those changes, so I decided to take a closer look at some nutrition facts. I knew there were sodium warnings, and I remember seeing them on a few items when I first started the experiment. But when I took a closer look, I realized that they only display the sodium warning on items that exceed 100% of your daily sodium intake. So in a given day, you could have a breakfast quesadilla, a grilled cheese burrito, and a Crunchwrap Supreme, and even though none of those have a sodium warning, your total from those three items alone would exceed 170% of your recommended daily sodium intake. This isn't an issue that's unique to Taco Bell. The Whopper from Burger King has 41% of your daily sodium intake. A Big Mac has 44%. A chicken burrito bowl from Chipotle has 123%. And a foot-long spicy Italian sub from Subway has 184% of your daily sodium intake. Just to be clear here, sodium in itself isn't bad, but excess sodium intake can lead to higher risk factors for more serious health complications. As a side note, week three also included a follow-up interview with the local news and another cookout, which meant bringing my own Taco Bell. I also started thinking a lot about some of the non-Taco Bell foods I was craving. Right now I could really go for like an everything bagel or a stack of pancakes or just like a bowl of fresh fruit. I'd take a banana. A banana and some peanut butter sounds amazing right now. But instead, I'm gonna go grab some breakfast from Taco Bell. Whenever I remember, I try to ask them not to give me napkins because at this point I feel like I already have like a lifetime supply of free napkins. And I do not need any napkins. My week three check-in revealed that my blood pressure had increased yet again, but it wasn't climbing as quickly as it had been previously. I'll take it. So I've officially finished my side quest of eating a full week of nothing but vegetarian and vegan options. And apart from feeling a little bit tired and a couple digestive surprises, I actually really enjoyed it. This week I continued to try to reach out to the Taco Bell dietitian. I even tried guessing her company email address to see if that would work. And it didn't get bounced back, so I guess it went to somebody. But I still have not heard back, so I'll continue pursuing that side quest until the end of the experiment if necessary. For week four, I introduced one final side quest, getting my blood pressure all the way back to normal. I feel like even if my body composition is better and my mile time is faster, I would still consider it a failure if I finished this experiment without being able to get a grasp on some of the things that would put me more at risk for serious health complications. I looked up ways to lower my blood pressure and sure enough, lowering my sodium was one of the top recommendations. I hadn't thought much of it at the time, but when we first talked, Katie had shared some thoughts on mitigating my sodium intake. You can consume more potassium as well. So tomatoes are rich in potassium, potatoes are rich in potassium, bananas, kiwis, that sort of a thing. Um, so if you do have the option to increase your potassium intake, along with drinking enough water, um, that can help with the sodium intake to balance it out. The problem is there aren't many items that are super high in potassium on the Taco Bell menu. There were tomatoes and potatoes, like Katie mentioned, and there was guacamole, but I was kind of unsure what to make of that because it was also pretty high in sodium. And then there was orange juice. At the beginning, I was anti-orange juice because of the high sugar content, but now I think I'm pro-orange juice because it has a decent amount of potassium. Orange juice is back, baby. I also tried to figure out what had the lowest sodium on the menu. According to Healthline, if you have high blood pressure, you should limit your sodium to 1500 milligrams per day. Looking at the menu, that seemed like it was going to be pretty difficult. As it turns out, one of the items with the lowest sodium is the crunchy taco. I couldn't believe I hadn't seen it. I mean, it had been right there in front of me all along. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Of course tacos were going to be the key to cracking this experiment. With this newfound knowledge, I headed into week four eating a combination of the foods I enjoyed most and what I would consider optimized foods, specifically the options with the least amount of sodium. Sodium. At this point, the finish line was in sight. I was enjoying the process, but pretty unsure of how my results would turn out. And then on day 26, a huge development for my side quests. Okay, you guys are never gonna believe this, but the Taco Bell dietitian just responded to my email. So first of all, that means I correctly guessed her email. <laughs> and second of all, it means that I might actually get an interview with her, which would be amazing. I still need to tell her that I'm eating nothing but Taco Bell for 30 days, uh, which might be, you know, a non-starter for her, but I'm still holding out hope. This is exciting. I felt like I had one shot to get her to say yes to an interview with me, so I spent way too long writing out a response and decided to level with her 100% and explain my experiment. And as it turns out, honesty really is the best policy because she agreed to an interview. How are you doing? Well, I'd love for, for you to just fill the audience in a little bit on some of the biggest changes that have been made to the Taco Bell menu that have helped it to become one of the healthiest fast food restaurants. You know, what's great is Taco Bell's been on, we call our food for all journey for the past 15 plus years. It's a multitude of things and I'll, I'll highlight a few for you. We had, you know, the Fresco menu, which evolved to Fresco style. And, and that was a quick customization tool to reduce overall calories and fat um, for whatever you're ordering. We've been on a long journey of reducing sodium 
cleaning up our labels, getting rid of artificial colors and flavors. We got rid of trans fat. We launched the power menu, which has bowls that are designed to be under 510 calories, over 20 grams of lean protein. We have our certified vegetarian menu. We have cage-free eggs. I mean, the list goes on. We've been doing so much behind the scenes that, you know, just the problem is, is not a lot of people know what we've been doing. Well, I think you're right. I think not enough people know about you know, the strides that have been taken and how healthy Taco Bell has become. And so I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the plan to reduce sodium. I mean, I'm sure you know this too, but first of all, nobody wants you to tell them that you're taking salt out of their food. I think sure. the automatic <laughs> first response, right, is like, it's not gonna taste good. So uh, that's why we call this more of like a stealth health approach because it's something that takes place slowly um, and intentionally behind the scenes over time. So. We do extensive testing to ensure that there are no flavor differences so that the end result is is a comparable to where it was originally. That's amazing. I just wanted to ask what you would say to maybe someone that sees fast food or quick service restaurants as black and white. So they have this mentality that either you eat at those restaurants and that makes you unhealthy or you can avoid them and that makes you healthy. What would you just say to someone that might have that view? I guess what I would say is, you know, go check out our information. We, we're super transparent about our food and our menu and, and, and everything that's in it. So, you know, what's great, our website has a nutrition calculator like you've already pointed out and used. We post full nutrition information online. We have an allergen calculator. So I would just tell people, hey, go, go check it out and, and then tell me what you think. I also just want to give you an opportunity. Is there anything that you would want people who might watch this documentary to know? The other thing I, I would love for people to know is, is we're not just focused on the food, right? Like we also know that um, our food has to come wrapped in something to give it to you as when you order from us. And we, we're also doing the right thing there too. So we are working on transitioning all of our packaging to be more sustainable, looking at recyclable options, compostable options, reusable options. So I hope people can feel good about the choices that they make at Taco Bell and that they feel good about them and the impact that it has on themselves as an individual, but also on the environment. I felt like I had even more respect for Missy after getting to talk with her. With that side quest finally completed and just a few days left in my experiment, Taco Bell introduced several new limited time offerings, which meant new menu items had been unlocked that I now needed to complete, and they were delicious. As the experiment drew to a close, I knew that no matter how my results turned out, I felt proud to have made it an entire month eating nothing but Taco Bell. That felt like a huge accomplishment in and of itself. So I knew I wanted to use my 90th meal to celebrate crossing the finish line in an unforgettable way. There was only one place I could imagine doing that, but it would require taking a little trip. So day 30 started out like any other with breakfast at my local Taco Bell, but it ended unlike any day in my entire life. I'll tell you where I'm headed in just a second, but the reason I'm able to take this trip is because of the support of my friends at Indigenous Healthcare Advancements. I learned recently that tribes in the U.S. often lack access to healthy food options, and sometimes the meals that are most accessible are the ones that you can find at gas stations or fast food restaurants like Taco Bell. So IHA wanted to sponsor this project as a small way to help people who have limited options make informed decisions about the food they eat. IHA focuses on enhancing the health and well-being of America's indigenous populations by improving access to healthcare services, health education, and wellness support. Thank you so much. I'd encourage you to check out their website to learn more about what they do because their cause is so important, but far too often it goes unnoticed by a lot of American citizens like me and people in power. If you're a tribal leader, tribal member, or work with tribes in the health and wellness space, you can connect with IHA to learn how they can help find solutions to a variety of healthcare needs. And their information is in the description below. So thanks to Indigenous Healthcare Advancements, I'm gonna get to have my 90th and final meal of the experiment at the flagship Taco Bell Cantina on the Las Vegas Strip. Let's do this. If it's all right, oh, yeah. I wanna kick it with you all night, all night. Woo. Have a good time. We will. Ain't gotta worry, cause it's all right, it's all right. Do. All night, all night, all night, baby. Don't be shy, don't be shy, don't be shy, baby. All night and all night, ain't gotta worry, cause it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. It's okay, everybody gon' say what they wanna say yep. Players gon' play when they wanna play Long lay, on lay, for my night light Lose the band brawls, ride, no way Daddy bad sad, don't skip no days Either, meet up, meet up, treat her like a queen Then I give her that As the night came to an end, I took a few minutes to reflect on the past month 30 days, 90 meals, 
nothing but Taco Bell. I'd made national headlines, interviewed Taco Bell's dietitian, and discovered a newfound gratitude for my health and well-being. The only thing left to do was head back to Virginia and do my final test to see how this thing turned out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the results. A little time has passed since I've finished the experiment and I've completed all my tests. Thanks to Katherine Thompson, Justin May, and Hilary Felton Reed for sponsoring my final blood work. And right here in this envelope, I have my final results. Before I share those results, I just want to say two things. One, I want to recognize that this has been a huge privilege to get to do this experiment. From paying for it to having access to things like health insurance, medical supervision, and a gym membership. I know that for people who may not have the luxury of having a regular paycheck or a place to store groceries, eating at quick service restaurants might be a necessity rather than a choice. And two, I know there will probably be people in the comments arguing against points made in this documentary. So I just want to acknowledge that everybody has bias, myself included, and one bias I've brought into making this documentary is that I'd much rather people have a positive, non-stressful relationship with themselves and with food than obsess over every single calorie they consume or burn. And I think there are definitely ways to do that while still making informed decisions about our food. So I just want to lay that out there. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, the results. I gotta be honest with you guys, I figured that some of the results would be positive and some of them would be negative but these results are so much better than I could have ever hoped for almost everything I tested improved I'm not kidding check this out I'll start with my blood pressure remember that final side quest well by the end of the experiment my blood pressure was no longer considered high and had pretty much returned to where it was when I started I was most worried about my sodium level and that ended up staying almost exactly the same it actually went down a little bit glucose also went down a tiny bit triglycerides went up a little bit but still well within the normal range and remember how I started with high cholesterol my overall cholesterol went down so now that's back in a normal range. And my bad cholesterol also went down while my good cholesterol went up. And that one is pretty crazy to me. Indicators of my kidney function remained pretty much unchanged, which is great news. My max pull-ups increased from seven to 10. Pretty impressive, I know. And my mile time dropped from 6.45 to 6.21. To prove that I didn't just take it super easy on the first mile, I actually recorded my heart rate immediately after each time. It was 186 beats per minute after my first time trial and 134 after my second. And now for my body composition. I started at 195.6 pounds and finished at 191.5. My muscle mass stayed about the same, but my fat mass decreased. That means the four pounds I lost were almost entirely fat, and my body fat percentage went down from 19.1 to 17.4%. I don't have time to go into every single result in detail, but the full results are linked below along with my complete meal log if you're interested in taking a closer look. And I just wanna say this real quick, the weight loss was not something that I was intentionally trying to do. And I'm actually a little bit bummed that my muscle mass and my overall weight didn't end up increasing. So just to reiterate, this experiment was so much bigger to me than just a number on a scale. I think our culture is so obsessed with weight and I'm sure it would be easy to write a headline that says something along the lines of man eats Taco Bell and loses weight. But if we're not careful about the language that we use, we can end up contributing to things like disordered eating, fat phobia, and shaming people for their weight or their food choices. So after 30 days of eating nothing but Taco Bell, is fast food as bad as some documentaries have made it out to be? No or at least not in my opinion. Can healthy fast food actually help you become healthier? I'll leave that for you to decide based on what you think of my results. Should you eat it for every meal like I did? No. Just to be clear, I am not recommending that anybody try to replicate this experiment to lose weight or for any other reason. But I do hope you can enjoy a little fast food every once in a while without feeling guilty or bad about yourself. And before you go, I just wanna share a few final numbers that I thought you'd enjoy. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey. It's been a wild ride. If it's all right, oh, yeah. I wanna kick it with you all night, all night. Woo. Have a good time, ain't gotta worry cause it's all right, it's all right. Do. All night, all night, all night, baby. Don't be shy, don't be shy, don't be shy.
Hey, it's me again. I just wanted to say one final thank you to everyone that supported the Kickstarter and made this dream a reality. Thanks to your generosity, I was able to do really cool stuff like leave a tip for every single employee at my local Taco Bell. I especially want to thank my executive producers, Reed Hanner, Mike Demopoulos, and David Sheffield. If you enjoyed watching this, you can check out some of my other videos about fast food right here. And you can also watch the full interviews with Missy and Katie, which are linked in the description as well. Finally, I host a variety show on YouTube called The Studio Review, and if you've made it this far, I hope you'll consider subscribing and checking out season four when it comes out later this fall. All right, I'll see you soon.